slides and the link later today. So let me get to our first speakers. We're very excited to have uh, the two gentlemen I mentioned from uh, Prescott. They both have over 20 years of industry experience. So let's start with Pete Taran. Pete is Director of Operations. Pete, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Also joining us is John Lubertz. John, you have an interesting title, AI Automation GRC. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I definitely have a long history and it's all business, I guess it would be. So GRC is just governance, uh, regulatory and compliance. Um, let's be honest, that's some of the most boring parts of almost every day business uh, to do with anybody. And so um, putting a focus of automation tools, especially now with the uh, advent of uh, AI being such an open umbrella. Um, normally someone as a dedicated resource or a dedicated mind sort of focusing on those kind of things uh, really benefits companies. <clears throat> Pete and I, and that's my role uh, next to uh, Pete there. And so um, that's how those things get rolled out title wise. Well, thank you both for being here. We'll let you take this away. Awesome, thank you, Laurie. So um, in talking with Lori and Sarah about a month or so ago about what we were doing at, Pres at Prescott with AI, uh, we got talking about how we could help out the SBAM members. And what we came up with is a an, almost like an introductory course to AI. So what you're going to see here today are some pretty basic use cases with tools that are mostly freely available. I uh, also want to point out that any of the images that you're going to see throughout the presentation are AI generated, uh, made with Microsoft's Bing, and that you, you're going to see screenshots from interactions with Microsoft Bing. So me asking Bing a question and Bing answering, and you're going to see those full outputs. The format for the presentation is going to be a, a story format. Uh, came up with a, a fictitious business owner named Gretchen. She owns a bicycle shop. And what we're gonna see is kind of a day in the life of Gretchen and how she's using AI tools in, in her everyday work. Uh, as Lori mentioned, we will have some time for questions at the end. So uh, feel free to ask them throughout and, and we'll get to those um, when the time is appropriate. And we also just wanna say thank you for allowing us to present to SBAM. Uh, both John and I work in small business. We've both started small businesses so to have the opportunity to share what we know about AI with you is, is we're, we're very proud of that. Um, I think I know some of you out there, uh, Fred, if you're out there from DEC, hello. You said you were gonna be attending the webinar today. So just wanna say hi to you. And uh, I'm just excited to, to share all this with everybody. This first slide here, you're thinking, oh man, this is the first slide and he's already showing graphs. This is gonna be boring. Uh, this is the, the only graph you're gonna see today. and the reason I'm sharing this is if if your perception of chat GPT or Bing or these AI tools is just people, you know, making uh, funny images and things like that, you're really missing a, a lot of the impact that AI can have in business. So uh, without you don't have to you know read all of this because you're going to get the slides afterwards if you want to dive into it more. But I'd ask you to focus on those three middle bullet points on the right there where we're talking about. AI is allowing workers to finish their work faster. Um, they're also going to have higher quality uh, with the work that they're doing, leveraging AI. There's a, a John, you and I are talking about, there's a phrase um, that's being used a lot around AI about, you know, are people going to take my jobs? You know, I talked about that earlier, if you want to speak to that a little bit. One of the one of the companies I follow pretty closely is I mean we could almost probably call them the Godfather, but people remember many many over a decade ago that uh, there was an AI competitor on Jeopardy, right? Uh, and this is IBM, right? IBM had Big Blue, then it went to Watson, uh, and now I think it's called Deep Think. They've keep evolving it, right? It's been along for a long time, but uh, IBM also has a research group uh, that is um, sort of like nonprofit based that they release articles and stuff and. We've heard a lot about AI saying, oh, this is going to replace people's jobs. Uh, and we also heard this about the Internet, about computers, about ATM machines and banking. I mean, it's an ongoing thing. But IBM was really interested in knowing not necessarily about the replacement, because that's not likely to happen. But without doubt, those 
people and employees and, and working uh, class that are using AI as their tools are very much likely to replace those that are not using AI. Um, so we all know it is a heavy, heavy, heavy competitive market out there. We are now globally uh, competi competing in almost every industry and especially in small businesses. Using AI is absolutely going to be critical in making sure that you compete effectively uh, and, and don't get you know, relegated to uh, on the bottom side of that bell curve there that uh, Pete has up, so. This next, uh, is this is just a screenshot of Microsoft's Bing tool. So if you were to go to bing.com and click on the, the chat uh, tab at the top of the screen, you'll see a screen that looks a lot like this. Um, so you can, it's free to use. And one of the reasons that we're highlighting Bing today is due to security. Um, they have been, Microsoft has been on the forefront of you know, uh, trying to protect any of the information that's going into their, their chat bot because they know that businesses wanna use this. So they wanna uh, be very secure with that. Um, so the, the combination of the security, the ease of use and, um, and the fact that it's free uh, is the reason that we're using that. So the majority of what you're gonna see today in the presentation was used with this tool with, with Microsoft Bing. And it's a real a lot of words on this slide. And again, you'll be getting the slides afterwards. This just highlights what Microsoft is doing to secure your information when you're using Bing. So we'll skip over this one pretty quick. And then this is a, uh, a couple of points that I've used for a year now in our internal uh, company meetings. Because right? we talk about AI in every all staff meeting that we have. And I talk about AI with basically anybody that will listen. Uh, but we encourage our employees to use these uh, AI tools, but we want them to use them responsibly. So number one there, always verify the results. The one thing about AI, and John, I'll let you speak to this a little bit more, but AI will confidently give you an incorrect response. And it's not, it's not trying to uh, fool you or anything. A lot of it may have to do with the input that you have. And John, I know you want to talk about that a little bit. So for small businesses, I mean, one of the one of the most important things is, is we do not have budgets often to go spend a million dollars to build your own custom uh, large language model or LLM. Right. That's that's just an unreasonable thing. So small businesses, some of the most important things is a we need to be flexible. B, we need to use tools that are readily available. AI does meet that readily available uh, mix. And it's also at the moment, almost entirely free across the board, maybe $30 a month if you wanna have some extra tokens with chat GPT. The important thing though to remember because you are not building your own LLM or your own very custom response queue, it means that you have to often phrase your things which is called prompt engineering but also if it's using some of your own data, like let's say, uh, you know, I know Copilot is going to be built into Outlook and a, a variety of Microsoft tools. BARD is getting moved into a lot of the Google workspaces. A lot of times how you phrase things needs to match how you also collect and store your data. Um, and that becomes hugely important. One thing that I was demonstrating to Pete was uh, even in our own documentation, uh, we have a, uh, a section that just says autocorrect enabled. And autocorrect enabled, yes or no, very much confuses an AI, just like it would say a new employee. They're saying, well, autocorrect enabled, disabled, what, what exactly does that mean? So of course, when you act AI and say, hey, do, how many of our businesses uh, amongst our current clients have this enabled? It said all of them because autocorrect enabled was the prompt that we were using to say enabled or disabled underneath it. And so again, this means that we have to even go into our own structures and our own uh, documentation and start restructuring, just say autocorrect, enabled or disabled and have those two options. And it really, such a simple, such a simple example really does highlight though, A, the benefits of AI saying, hey, can you go scan all of our clients and who has this and who doesn't, but also starts demonstrating the importance of, for small businesses, starting to get yourself prepared for AI integration. Right now, a lot of companies, probably AI is just something that sits in the sidebar. It absolutely is going to be built into your productivity tools and whatever workspace you're using and getting your documentation and how you store things 
set now so you have six months, a year for when that really is ready to be released is, is hugely important. Um, this is not something you're going to want to start pivoting into after it's already reached maturity uh, because the top 20% in your industry that are using AR are going to so drastically accelerate uh, their businesses and how they land clients compared to a lot of other small businesses that are maybe a little bit slower on it. So, so if you're going to implement AI in your business, and we hope you all do, now is the time to start thinking about how you're storing your data. And, and it's, it, AI is not a person, so it's not going to make the same inferences about your data that a, that a human might. So you're going to have to start prepping your data to be read by AI. Uh, the second point here is um, if you're not using Bing or Microsoft's Copilot, which are all both Microsoft tools, one in the same, really. Be careful with the information that you do use. Even with ChatGPT, they don't make the same claims about data security that Microsoft does. So just be careful with that. If your employees are using that or you're using that, um, be mindful of the kind of information that's being uploaded uh, to those tools. So now we're gonna start our story with, with Gretchen here. Gretchen owns this bicycle business, as I mentioned earlier. Um, she comes into work on Monday, she starts her day. And like all of us, you know, she has a daunting week ahead of her and she's trying to figure out how she's going to get everything done. She opens up her email and she gets uh, this flagged email that came in from a, from a client, from Fred. And Fred uses the word really disappointed in his email. Well, between Gretchen and her employees, they get all kinds of emails coming in. And a lot of them don't require instant action. But how do you uh, separate the, the wheat from the chaff, right? Well, AI can do that for you using something called sentiment analysis. So you can set up AI, Bing doesn't do this, this would be a, a different a different tool, uh, but you can set up AI to read those incoming emails and let you know like, hey, this is something you need to pay attention to right now. So in this case, Gretchen gets alerted, um, Fred didn't get his the bike seat that he ordered. So she's got a full day. Um, not sure. She doesn't have time to sit down and think about how she wants to compose this email back to Fred. So she goes to Bing. And what you can see in the upper right hand corner in, in the dark blue is the prompt that I gave Bing. So I was acting as, as Gretchen in this case. Uh, and, and that's what she typed into the, the chat box. And then what you see is the response from that. So is this a, the most perfect email? No, um, but what you now have is a framework that was generated in one second or two seconds that you can go in and quickly edit, copy that into an email back to the client and send that off. And you just saved yourself five minutes sitting there trying to think, how do I compose this email back? Or maybe you have employees in your company that you don't, uh, that you don't trust to, their writing skills aren't where you would like them to be. This can make them a better writer instantly because it's going to uh, compose uh, the, the text in a way that, that you want them to. You'll notice too in the, the very last part of that in the blue box there, it says be empathetic. So you can see a line in there where it says, I understand how frustrating this must be for you. And I want to, want to assure you that we are doing everything we can to get your shipment to you as soon as possible. That's, that's that empathetic piece. So I was, Gretchen was directing uh, Bing to be empathetic in, in this response and it, and it replied in, in kind. Pete, Pete, if I can throw in there. So I, there's probably a lot of people looking at this saying, hey, I've seen some of these screens before. Pete obviously copied it in and, and is using it as an answer. And, and even then, that's a little bit of a manual task. Obviously, me being a bit of an automation um, purveyor, I guess it would be. Uh, there are companies like Salesforce right now absolutely has this where it's completely automated, where it will scan and monitor your social medias and look for negative sentiment and either A, alert you, or you can create workflows. Uh, Salesforce has this. I know HubSpot also has this. They, I think there's this called CopyBot. Um, both of these are things that you could log into right now and enact your business. One of the biggest challenges though for small businesses is we've all been to Salesforce and seen their pricing online. Salesforce is not what you would consider uh, necessarily the cheapest solution out there. And in fact, Salesforce, in all its amazement, is probably out of a lot of people's uh, pocketbooks or budgets. You can see, though, these type of technologies, especially AI, is going to start with the largest companies like Salesforce and HubSpot and these larger vendors, even Microsoft Dynamics, 
because they can afford to give it to you at almost no charge right now. They're not going to charge you $200 a month uh, for an AI subscription, but it is costing them a fortune on the back end to do a lot of this processing. But these things are something where if you don't have the budget, like Pete, Pete's demonstrating here, you can do this yourself using, you know, Copilot or uh, bard.google.com or whatever, chat GPT. Um, you absolutely can use tools available. It's just a little bit more manual. Currently, if you were looking for that full solution automation uh, into what this would be, there's going to be some costs that are up there right now that may or may not be small business oriented. But I don't think that that should stop you from maybe at least getting your process set in place on what you would do if you end up with a negative sentiment. How do you react to these kind of things? Because these tools will become very cost effective very quickly. And you've already got your processes set. You're just ready to go. You're just looking for a tool that meets how you currently operate with your business in certain situations or processes. So uh, we sent the email back to Fred and Gretchen thought she would check one more email before she goes to her next meeting. So you got this email from David now. David just bought a bike from Gretchen and he took a picture of it, sent it to Gretchen and said, hey, I just got this new bike, but the bike seat is, is too high. How, how do I get this bike seat down? Gretchen doesn't have a instructions printed off or in a PDF somewhere that she can send to David. And she really doesn't have the time to sit down and, and type out like how to lower a, a bicycle seat. So what another feature that you can do with Bing is you can ask it to look at an image. So in the, in the bottom uh, where it says, ask me anything right underneath that is that camera icon. If you click on that, when you're in Bing, you can upload images and you can upload PDFs um, and some other file formats. Uh, so in this particular case, as you can see in the purple box in the upper right, all she says is give me instructions for lowering the seat on this bike. And then you see the response below that. And it's a response. Um, now, it could have been a more specific response if we had given a bike model um, this is actually an AI generated bike. It's not even a real bike. So if it had been a real bike, you might get more specific instructions for that bike. Um, but that's a really cool feature. And John, I know you've had some some success in doing some OCR with with uh, with Bing. Yeah, even even last night. So right now, the only way until Microsoft has a more reasonable Copilot seat or Bard or a lot of these other vendors that have it. Uh, Microsoft at the moment will read PDFs all the way through. So anything with a PDF or an image like Pete is showing here, you absolutely can ask it questions. I was actually playing with this uh, just last night to test this out and make sure any of their changes still work. Uh, so a friend of mine is putting in a new uh, humidifier system into their HVAC system in their house, right? So went online, grabbed the huge PDF uh, that came with from the manufacturer. It was about 50 or 60 pages. Uh, dumped it into Copilot and then asked it a question and said, you know, what is the life of the filter uh, that we're expecting? Um, how often should we replace the filter? And it absolutely came back and said, hey, this is the life of the filter. This is how often you should replace it. This is the look for if you have any problems. And it garnered all of that information from literally that 50 or 60 page uh, PDF. Hugely effective, right? As opposed to you spending time sorting through it, trying to figure out what's going on. Now, as more and more manufacturers become AI oriented, you're probably just gonna be able to go to their website uh, and just say, and just ask their AI bot a question from that manufacturer. But at the moment, these are real tools that you, you can use as of today. As a small business, we all know air conditioners are extremely expensive when it comes to um, building, uh, building costs on an annual basis. Right now, I've done some tests and there's some pretty impressive things you can ask Bard uh, and Copilot and say, you know, what are the best air conditioners at a two ton or a ton and a half right now in the Michigan area? Because remember, you might have very different HVAC, um, uh, HVAC capabilities for, say, someone in Arizona versus maybe manufacturers that might be more suited to, you know, us up here in the north. Right. And so you can get some really impressive information to do. Uh, exhibits on those. So just some full, further examples of it being in use. Cool. Thank you. Uh, the next slide here is Gretchen on her lunch. 
she's working through her lunch, of course, but she needed a little respite from the day. So she just asked, uh, asked Bing to give her a joke about a bike, which you can read here, which my 17 year old son thought was really funny. So did I. Uh, so you, you can have some fun with it too. And I'm, I'm seeing that we're, we do wanna leave time for questions. So I'm gonna try to move through these next slides a little faster. Um, this next part is an example. The, the story part of this is that Gretchen was asked to speak at the Bicycle Association meeting. They know that she's into AI. So they said, hey, can you talk to us about AI? So she goes into Bing and says, you know, how will AI shape the bicycle industry over the next three years? And you can see you got a long output there. And again, you'll have these slides. So you don't have to read that. Uh, this next slide is pretty text heavy as well. So Gretchen decides that she's going to focus on the bicycle helmet uh, and how AI built into bicycle helmets is going to shape the, the bicycle industry moving forward. So just getting more and more specific. The thing I want to highlight here is that you can see uh, there's, there are some links here. So uh, Bing or some of these other tools will include links in their responses to you so that you can go and do further research or or verify that the information that you're getting is, is accurate. Uh, in addition to being able to read images, Bing can create images. So it's using DALI, um, which you've probably heard of. Um, and so for her presentation about bike helmets, she didn't, she couldn't find when she did an image search on Google, the uh, helmet that she wanted. So she asked it to create one for her. So she's able to copy those and put those into, into her uh, presentation to the Bicycle Association. And the last um, example, workday example for Gretchen here is, you know, she's been wanting to hire this salesperson for a long time. And this, the thought of sitting down and creating a job description was daunting. And there was always something else that she could be doing with her time. Well, this literally was, you know, a, a two sentence prompt into being, give me uh, a, a job description for a salesperson for a, a bicycle uh, sales company. And this is what it came up with. Um, and again, we have to keep our scope narrow here in the time that we have today to talk to you guys about AI, but there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. In a chat with Bing, you, know, you can keep the conversation going. So if you got this as the output for your job description and you didn't like a part of it, you can ask it to change it and it will update the job description again with your changes. So you don't have to copy it into a Word document and, and modify it. I mean, you can certainly do that if you want. You can save yourself a lot of time and ask the AI to make the modifications to the document, um, the information that it's giving you. So the last thing here is uh, Gretchen finally wrapped up her day. Um, she's going to drive her convertible home from work, and she was hoping to listen to some relaxing pop music on, on the way home. So she switches from Bing to ChatGPT because ChatGPT, Chat GPT, excuse me, has a hundreds, if not a thousand different plugins that you can use. And Spotify is one of those plugins. So you can go to chat GPT with the paid version and ask it to create uh, a song list for you. So in this particular case, it's calm driving music for the ride home. So it not only did it give a list of songs and it gave you 10 here, if you told it, give you 20 or give you 50 or a hundred, it would give you that many. But then in the bottom, it, it actually gives you the link. So if I were to click that link, it would go, it would open up Spotify for me and have that playlist available and I could start playing it right there. So uh, just a lot of fun uh, there that you can have with it. And we could have 10 hours of webinar on ChatGPT and all the possibilities that you can do there. So um, that brings us uh, through the presentation. Um, Sarah, I see you're popping back on here. We, do we have some questions? Yes, thank you. I, I think that was really helpful to kind of talk about some of the practical ways that we can utilize AI tools um, in our everyday work, um, become a little bit more um, efficient with our time. Uh, we do have a question from someone who owns a medical practice and wants to know about um, using AI um, that is HIPAA compliant. Any insights HIPAA to HIPAA compliance? compliance? Yes, that is always an interesting one. Uh, I would say the shortest answer is absolutely. Don't type in a patient's name, social security number, date of birth. Uh, obviously, those familiar with HIPAA know uh, the particular variables that would be considered, you know, HIPAA concerning, right? And so, if you don't type those in, you absolutely can use any of the chatbots. 
I think as Pete and I probably promote a little bit heavy is the one thing that we've been very, has allowed us to relax a little bit when it comes to concerning questions um, is that there is a big green checkbox in Copilot uh, in the Microsoft environment that absolutely states with a publicly displayed uh, disclaimer, legal disclaimer saying they do not store, they do not save, they do not model off of anything that you type in there and anything you type in there is not accessible from anybody else using a bot. I know BARD has, is, has some similar language and that's on Google side. The rest of them often do not have that same thing. In fact, they're using your information to help improve their models. That's why it's free a lot of times. I do know that Copilot is absolutely, this is something Pete and I've spent some time on too, to say if you're looking for the most secure in a corporate space at the moment, Microsoft has the most publicly faced policy at the moment. All right, do we have any other questions? That was the only one that came in during the, the chat but, or during the, the webinar, but we can see if anyone's brave enough to put something in chat or the Q&A here. Are there any other um, like guardrails or any other um, you know, words of advice you might want to, uh, to share with this group as we, as we prepare to close out today? I, I would just say start. If, if you're not already using one of these tools, just start tonight. Like go home, you're sitting on the couch, you got the game on, bring up, open up your laptop, open up your phone, go to bing.com, go into the chat and just start playing around with it. Ask it to create an image. Ask it to look at an image of your dog or your cat and explain it. Or it, it, your, your limitation is really your imagination when it comes to these tools. But, you know, I think today, actually, I just saw this before the thing started. We're on the one year anniversary of when ChatGPT hit, really hit the scene. And so much has happened in this last year. And John and I have been glued to it, you know, John, way before I even started getting into it. And that's how we've been able to get into it. Is I just I do what I just explained when I'm hanging out, uh, watching the game or whatever. I've got it up and I'm poking around. I also subscribe to a bunch of different AI uh, email newsletters, and I would highly encourage you to do that. Um, actually, what I'll do here is uh, these QR codes, the, the only one will take you right to the Prescott uh, AI tab of our website where we do AI consulting. And there's a, a bot or a, a box there where you can put in your information and it will come to us and we'll re reach back out to you and we can discuss what you want to accomplish with AI. These go right to our LinkedIn pages. So if you want to message us on LinkedIn, uh, you, you scan us with your, your camera app on your phone, it'll take you right to our LinkedIn page. Um, connect with us, send us questions, uh, and we can help you out there. But just start. I, I really, you know, you see AI evangelist in my in my bio here and for LinkedIn. I, the, I really don't want people to get left behind with this technology. I, I want all of us, especially Michigan and, and these small businesses. I want all of us to really thrive using these AI tools. And we'd love to talk to you about um, what your challenges are and how they could be uh, solved and addressed with with AI tools. Yeah, I love that advice to just start. I know um, here at SBAM as a team, we've been kind of dipping our toes in the water as well and trying to learn what's out there and how we can become more efficient and use these use these tools in our rules. Um, we did have another question come in though, um, re related to chat GPT, um, saying chat GPT isn't current. Um, do the other tools mentioned have recent information within the last three years? Yeah, Jen, I'll let you take that. It, they do, and that's and that's a clearly someone who who's been following some news feeds and is a little bit aware of that. So, this is a, a little bit of an interesting thing. And Pete and I have spent a lot of time talking about this, and kind of why we're putting our eggs into certain baskets and not the AI basket on whole. Very few companies outside of Google and outside of Microsoft are going to be able to not only house the enormous amount of indexing of what is on the current World Wide Web, right? but also able to incorporate its AI into that, right? So you can have the world's most phenomenal AI brain, right? Uh, it's like having the world's smartest person, but if they don't have an internet connection, ask them about something that's happening outside of their house. They're just not gonna have the most valid answers. And so I, I really do suggest either using BARD at the moment uh, or using uh, Copilot because those are two, those two absolutely are using relevant current information that is part of their natural search which is why on December 1st, 
uh, even though Pete is using the current nomenclature, uh, Bing is going to go away. And now it's just going to be Copilot because it is essentially merging the Bing search with the AI algorithms and what they're using. So there's just going to be uh, copilot.microsoft.com. And I believe if you go to bing.microsoft, it's going to redirect you to Copilot on December 1st. All right. I will mention too that SBAM's um, January issue of Focus Magazine does feature a more in-depth article on some AI tools authored by Pete. So look for that in your in your mailboxes in just over a month. Um, and I don't think we have any other questions, Lori. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Pete Tarrant, John Lieberts, Prescott. We appreciate you sharing this information. Again, folks, we'll be sending this out to you later today. Please reply. Let us know how pertinent this information was. We hope you found it useful, and we'd love to know what other information you'd like to hear about uh, regarding AI. So do reply and let us know how this went. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.